Yeah. Okay. Uh, then. Uh, uh, so using this expression, this, uh, this formula, you see how R and I transform. Okay. Now, uh, important thing is to see how they transform under an electric. Electric means a, 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 a not shallow global symmetry. That is a global symmetry represented by this uh, block matrix with the B equal zero. This is a global symmetry uh, of the action. No? It's important to see how R and I transform under symmetry in GP. And you see, if you just uh, use this formula, you can deduce the corresponding transformation property of uh, the blocks I and R. This uh, G in GE. Okay. And you see they transform like this. Now, interestingly, you see that R transforms uh, uh, covariantly, no? uh, using block D, but it also has a shift. This is a constant shift. Okay. So this constant shift determines a variation of the Lagrangian, so it's not true that the Lagrangian is invariant. The Lagrangian varies, but varies by this term here. This term is, a, is a, a, a total derivative because C and A are constant blocks. So this is a, con a total derivative, so it won't affect the equations of motion. Okay. Uh, however, it will affect uh, uh, path integral. So the quantum theory, because uh, the, the action varies the, the exponent by by a total derivative, okay? However, so by bundle terms. However, we know that at the quantum level, C and A are quantized. So this is really, uh, thanks to this, this term here amounts to an invariance of the quantum, of a, of the quantum theory, so of so the path integral instrument, since C and A are quantized. Uh, transformations in which C is different from zero are called, are called they change in transformations. So transformations which imply this uh, characteristic shift in R, they are called Pechepi transformations. Pechepi. And they are uh, implied by or associated with uh, shift symmetry in axionic fields. With a certain amount of supersymmetry, a certain uh, um, field content, so uh, supermultiplet content, and uh, we uh, perform the gauge, which consists in <coughs> promote a suitable subgroup of the global symmetry group of the Lagrangian. to local symmetry gauged by the vector fields. Okay? This requires uh, introducing the minimal couplings, covariant derivatives, um, non-abelian field strengths. Okay? When you say we start with certain field content, yes, uh, certain number of multiples, does that completely specify the starting point, or we can have the same number of multiples but different 
uh, spaces and all that. Yeah, you choose the, the one of the starting point is the the, the unveiled supergravity. You choose any unveiled supergravity you want. Okay. Okay. We are we are cons we are considering extended models. So you, this means that you can really consider any uh, four dimensions model with n greater or equal than two. Any. Okay. Uh, that would be defined by a certain amount of supersymmetry and a certain field in this sense. Yeah, but the field can not specify the well, I guess. The scalars will need from different scalar manifolds. No, no, no. Or the scalars we need the, on the same scalar manifold. So once you fix the unleashed supergravity, you're fixing uh, supersymmetry is fixing everything. Okay. Including so uh, so you if you if you're talking about uh, field content and scalars, okay. You're also specifying the scalar menu. Because I can think of different homogeneous spaces with say the same dimension. Yes, so yes, but they're yes. different. No, no, I totally agree with you. I totally agree with you. In n equal to two or, or uh, then you have, in n equal to two you, you you can you have the freedom to choose different uh, with the same dimensions so it's the same amount of scalar bits, so same field content, but you can choose different geometries for the scalar menu. In n equal to two. So there you, are, you have this freedom. For n greater than 2, and for 3, 4, and so on, once you fix the, 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 the field content, so the, the super multiple structure, the super multiples, then uh, the super uh, the scalar manifold is fixed for n greater than 3. For n equal to 2, greater or equal than 3. For n equal to 2, then you have also to specify at the beginning, choose a uh, scalar manifold. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that is important. So that, that is one of the starting data. Yeah, thank you. So uh, second, well, when you introduce minimal couplings, you're breaking supersymmetry. When you're introducing the minimal coupling that you need to make this group a local symmetry, you're breaking supersymmetry explicitly. So the rest of the dating procedure consists in modifying The Lagrangian L and the Fermi Susi transformation properties in order to to uh, restore. The original amount of supersymmetry of the uh, um, gauge theory we started. Okay? And this implies masses, general Picard terms, and the A scalar potential. Okay. So our approach to ga the gauging procedure, okay. It's going to be gradual in the sense that uh, uh, I think it's more instructive to discuss the gauging procedure in a, a non-G-covariant form. In a non-G-covariant form, okay? Because in that case, uh, doing this, we better understand the origin of the, on the, of the various constraints on the gauge group, okay? That is on the embedding tensors, uh, tensor as we shall see. And then move to the duality covariant formulation of the gauging procedure, which will call for the so-called here tensor here. Okay? Good. So we start from an H theory. theory. In D equal four, if we are fixing we're focusing on four-dimensional theory and greater or equal than two. In a certain symplectic frame, we shall level the, the, the components of this symplectic frame by a hatted index because we want to distinguish this symplectic frame for a gen from a generic symplectic frame, which we are going to deal with later. Okay? So in this symplectic frame, the vector fields are labeled by a half of index.
Okay? So we're going to have f m hat, which is f lambda hat and g lambda hat. Okay? And then the duality of the as we know. Okay? <coughs> then we take, so this is uh, the original symplectic frame, which we are going to call electric. <coughs> symplectic frame. Okay, this is our starting point. So we fix an unleashed per gravity, meaning that for any good, we are also fixing the geometry of the scale. We're making a choice. Okay? Next. In this symplectic frame, the global symmetry group will have a certain embedding inside the, sym the symplectic group. So in particular, R, sorry, R1 of GE will be will consist of matrices of the form A of D minus C D, uh, A zero. It is zero. Okay? It consists of matrices of this form. Symplectic matrices. Hmm. Next we choose G inside G D. Global symbol group of the electron. And we want to promote it, promulgate it, so promote to local symmetry. How would we do this in an ordinary non supersymmetric theory? Well, if you have a non supersymmetric theory, say a theory describing a, a complex scale, okay, with a certain global symmetry, like a, a one global symmetry on the complex scale, okay, then how, what would we do uh, for, uh, for gauging, in order to gauge this symmetry? We would introduce a vector field or a number of vector fields in general if the, the group is non abelian okay we would introduce vector fields transforming it in the quadrant representation of the gauge group so we would introduce a lambda nu in the quadrant representation of this global this gg the would be gauge group, okay? Introduce um, minimal couplings, that is uh, covariant derivatives, gauge covariant derivatives, uh, define uh, uh, non abelian of these strengths, okay? And then uh, make the theory in this way invariant under local symmetries G, okay? This is what we would do in a non specific theory. We just add vector fields with a, with a specific transformation property with respect to G. The vector fields that we need, the gauge fields, we just add them together with their kinetic term. And the theory becomes the local aging part. In supergravity, we're not completely free to do this. Why? Because we are starting from a theory, an engaged theory, or theory. We are starting from an engaged theory in which the field content is fixed. So we can only use the vector fields that are there in the ungaged theory. We cannot introduce vector fields with certain uh, uh, transformation properties. No. We must use the vector fields that we have in our ungaged theory. First. Second, all bosonic fields in the ungaged theory have a well defined transformation property under the global symmetry group G, and therefore also under G E. And therefore also the vector fields have a well-defined transformation property under the group G E. And therefore under any subgroup of G E. Okay? So we are not completely free, or at least not as free as if we would be in a non supersymmetric theory. Because we have to start from a well-defined theory, so action 
of the A B subgroup of G E on A lambda mu is fixed as a global symmetry to C. As global symmetry, that is fixed. Let's describe the action of an infinitesimal transformation. by x lambda the gauge generators. The gauge generators. Okay? You see we have a lower lambda. Well we have a another lambda index. So that G is equal to x of a genetic combination lambda Okay, so the infinitesimal generators of the gauge group uh, will be denoted by x lambda, lower lambda. Okay, so what is their block structure? Well, these are uh, in GE, so their block structure is that one. R1 of x lambda. They have a zero here because they are generators in G. Then we have a block here. This block is X lambda sigma gamma. Okay. And a block here which is X lambda sigma gamma. And a block here which is X lambda. So this is the block structure, general block structure of a generator in the gauge loop that we want to get. That's the most general form. So that's the infinitesimal duality action of the will be gauge loop on the vector field sense and their magnetic fields. Okay? Where? With a minus sign. 
This is related to the condition that we wrote before a equal to d, a transpose equal to d minus 1. Remember, for finite transformation. Transformations. Then we also have the condition that x lambda, sigma gamma, is symmetric in the last thing. So this comes from the condition that this transformation has to be symplectic. Okay? Maybe it has to generate a symplectic transformation. Right? Okay, now, now remember how the field strengths transform under the transformation in G, they transform the electric field strengths in G. Transform linear. So, 
x lambda x sigma our gauge uh, generators they close an algebra inside big G with these structure constants they close an algebra structure constants satisfy the Jacobian by consistency Okay. 
form x lambda sigma gamma x lambda sigma gamma x lambda gamma sigma zero okay we can also have transformations in which this plot is, is not treated it's not zero, not zero. the so-called pejekovic transformations infinitesimal pejekovic under this transformation, remember the formula we wrote before for the transformation property of the blocks R and I. Okay? See that delta R lambda sigma, if we apply this transformation property, this formula here to an infinitesimal transformation, we can easily find two sign two psi delta times x delta uh, lambda gamma r sigma gamma symmetrized lambda sigma okay this is just applying the, the transformation property to this infinitesimal plus plus minus psi lambda delta x delta lambda sigma okay so you have this shape this is the page a queen transformation page a queen transformation written in infinitesimal form now we 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 saw how the Lagrangian transforms under this transformation It transforms by a total derivative, a boundary, L, L4 goes into, oh, let's write, delta L4 is equal to minus psi delta, this guy here, psi delta x delta, Lambda sigma f lambda where f sigma. Okay? Now this is a total derivative, only if psi is constant. But now we want to promote this, this group to a global from local global symmetry of the Lagrangian to local symmetry. We won't make it, we won't, we won't, we'd like to make its parameters local. That is space time dependence. G local. This implies psi lambda equal psi lambda of x mu. Now, if psi depends on x, this is no longer a symmetry. So, how can we cope with that? The answer was given, and I'm not going to rewrite it. The answer was given by um, David <coughs> Lowers and the Van Ruyen. And they show that in order to cancel this term, you have to add a topological term to the Lagrangian, depending on this precisely on this x. So you have to add a term like minus g, g is going to be our coupling point divided by so add divided by g x lambda sigma gamma a lambda wedge a sigma wedge d a gamma Ma plus 3 over 8 g x delta i gamma a delta wedge a There is a three here. Okay? So they showed that you can cancel this term, which is not, not the global, uh, sorry, it's not the 
for the delivery now, you can cancel by a variation of this term. Provided, provided x lambda sigma gamma is equal to zero. Provided this is true. So this mechanism works provided you impose this condition. So this is one of the conditions that we have for a viable agent that we have to add among, so within the group of constraints that we have on the possible choices of the agent. This is one. But can is this term symmetric by itself, or do you need to add the fermions? You need to add the fermions. This term. Uh, so, but they all. No, 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 no. no. It, there's no particular Fermi term for this term. Uh -huh. So, uh, the Fermi terms, they are all. Uh, the Fermi terms that you add, you have to add, they have a standard form. Uh, and they're not really specifically to this or that term, okay? Uh, they are in cover terms. Okay, so, they are a very general form. However, they are. Um, the, the, the tensors defining these Yukawa terms, called the masters of the, the permanent fields, will depend also on this. So, uh, this, the variation of this will produce a term which is going to cancel, be cancelled by, by uh, the variation of the Yukawa term. The first order range. So, we need to modify the Yukawa term. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. But everything is going to be encoded in the definition of, of the matrices, uh, the mass matrices entering the Yukawa terms, which are depending on the scalar fields. So they are mass matrices only in the vacuum. Okay? Otherwise, it's Yukawa terms. Okay? But these matrices depend also on this. So if you want, the dependence of these matrices on this is precisely needed for the cancellation of the supersymmetric variation of this. Is it a case of age, age coupling constant? Yeah. So if you take that to zero, uh -huh. then you go back to the global. You go back, yeah. So, so it's important to, to define a G. So that if you switch it off, so you set it to zero, you're back to the age yeah. And then also those like, what I call extra terms in the cover coupling will also go to zero. They will also go to zero. In cover coupling, it will be order G. And then you need also the order G squared term in the which is a potential, a scale potential. And that's all. So, but now I'm going, to, I'm going to discuss this, how you modify the Lagrangian in order to resume the restore of this What do you assume that there's only a single gauge group? You cannot have a product of gauge group? You could, you can. Which then what happens you want to do? You can, definitely. Yeah, yeah. this is just an overall. This is just an overall one. Just a, a convenient parameter to define the limit of which the theory is engaged. Okay? But, but, as we shall see, the gauge parameters are in this x. So this, this x, this, these uh, blocks, will in general depend on other parameters. So in general, will depend on, uh, you can have the algebra which is the direct sum of So G if you want is the overall coupling constant. You have more of them, it's an overall one. Setting that to zero means setting the whole gauge. Okay, so let us uh, recall uh, all the constraints that we have found. Okay, and then and then uh, we we proceed in uh, with the gauging procedure, that is we proceed with making the Lagrangian locally invariant under transformation in this function. So the constraints are G. We have found a set of constraints. Some are linear and they are X lambda sigma gamma that's zero. X lambda sigma gamma equal to minus X lambda gamma sigma and 
and uh, then we also have x lambda sigma gamma is equal to zero. Okay, these are the concepts we worked out so far, and lambda sigma gamma equals zero. This is the last constraint condition that we found for the cancellation of the pH equation. These are the linear ones. Then we also have a quadratic. representation R, whatever, of our gauge group and so of our gauge algebra, this is the standard definition of, of a covariant Exercise that they give you is the following. Take a transformation U in G. Show that D is covariant. If and only if omega transforms under U in an omega prime, which is U, U omega, U minus one minus U D. Check. Check that this is the correct transformation property of a gauge connection in order for the covariant derivative defined in this way to be covariant. Okay? Okay. 
That the other thing It's just the covariant derivative of the of epsilon. 
Okay. So Replace ordinary derivative by gauge covariant derivatives, and uh, abelian fixed strands by non abelian fixed strands.
testing out the fermion fields. Phi, psi, A, mu, is that the LGZ? I suppress this. No, sorry. So, LG0, is that the uh, gauge but unsupersymmetric action? Precisely. Okay. And then what is delta on the higher terms of the... I'm going to, I'm going to write them okay. down now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These are the terms that you have to write. And they have a universal form. Once you fix the gauge, fix G. You choose the gauge. gauge. So this is our, these are our Gartinia suppressed spinorial uh, spinorial uh, uh, index. And these are the spin one half. I is the uh, index labeling genetically all these spin one half. Some of these uh, may be part of the gravitational supermultiplet and they are called the dilatini. Others of the perfect multiples they are called the AGE, others of the hypermultiples, when there are hypermultiples, that is not many words, they are called hypermultiples. Collect, I denote them collectively by one line. Here's the general expression of that energy. One is proportional to G. Twice, psi bar A mu. Gamma, mu mu, psi b mu, s a b, plus i lambda bar i, gamma mu, psi mu a, and i a, plus lambda bar i, Lambda J M I J plus plus Hermitian question. Because these are copies. Okay, but Lagrangian has to be real. So we have to have these terms. The Hermitian contributes. And you see, first observation, this is first order in G. Second observation. It depends on these tensors. M, M, psi. I'm going to tell you more about them. For the time being, we just say that these tensors also enter the supersymmetry variation. This is the first two of the Fermion psi delta supersymmetry. Psi A mu. mu, this is D mu x from A plus plus I G S A B gamma mu x from A. Uh, here I'm using the value basis for the spinners. This means that gamma phi epsilon a psi a lambda i is equal to plus epsilon a psi a lambda i. So with lower indices plus, plus chi alpha, upper index minus chi alpha. This is useful because in this basis the R symmetry is manifest. Okay, delta epsilon lambda i is equal to blah 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 terms that are there also in the uh, engaged uh, theory, okay? Not writing them. Plus G, this is the additional term that we have to write. M I A epsilon A. Okay. <coughs> so you see, you have to add terms to the supersymmetry variation of the uh, fermionic fields. This Terms depend precisely on the same matrices that define uh, the Yukawa terms. These are Yukawa terms. Why are they Yukawa terms? Because the matrices A, B depend on phi, and I, A depend on phi, and I, J.
depend on phi. So this is, these terms are coupling, Yukawa coupling between these main tensors, which depend on phi, so scalars, it's fermi continuous. These are called Yukawa tensors. Okay? So you need to add, yes? Oh, I should say, first of all, it, it is 20 last, so maybe. Okay, okay, okay. next 10 minutes, there's a natural place to, to show. Sure, sure, sure. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But also, so, I think of Yukawa specifically as terms of phi, psi, psi bar. Yes. Uh, but these are functions of phi. These are functions of phi, in general. They are highly nonlinear functions of phi. But I guess it's still called the Yukawa, but it's difficult. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's just a phi times the psi, psi, psi. So it basically the uh, higher order, uh, higher order in the, in the scalar yeah. But, uh, yeah. I would call it, I would call them Stephen Cowell. Yeah, so they are a clear generalization of the original Cowell. Right. So these tensors depend on phi and <coughs> on the way. Okay? Okay, that's not the end of the story because we need to add also another term, which is second order in the coupling constant. In the gauge coupling. So, delta L G2, this is a potential, a scalar potential.
you can uh, you can uh, define a, a, a gauge connection, gauge connection, uh, gauging the only the part of the gauge group, which is in the isotopy group H, and because the fermion is only the field cap. Okay? So you can define like that and define provided it is also for the fermions. One last uh, uh, comment and then uh, we'll stop for today. Uh, is the notice the uh, analogy between this construction and the, the, um, the theory and equal one and equal four um, pure supergravity with cosmological constant constructed by um, Townsend that we discussed in the very first lecture. Notice this, the, the similarity. There, in order to have to introduce a cosmological con constant which uh, plays the role there of a potential, we didn't have scalar fields, so the cosmological constant was a trivial potential, okay? We needed to add the mass term for the fermion fields and an additional term to the supersymmetry transformation of psi. So in that case, a and B run from one to um, from one to one because it's an equal one. Uh, so in that case, it was very simple. Can I delete this? So in the case of n equal one, b equal four, with lambda from zero. Okay. Then in that case, A was just 1, basically. S11 one, one was uh, lambda over 2. And uh, uh, V, the scalar potential, which was uh, lambda, was just uh, um, minus 3 lambda and lambda squared. Uh, clearly, there were no spin one half fields, so n was equal to zero, or all the rest was equal to zero. You can easily verify that these satisfy the uh, world identity. So it is instructive to verify world identity in that single case. Okay? How much time do we have now? Uh, I think it's a good place to stop. Uh, okay, sure. Okay. Maybe we just one question? Sure. I don't know if there's more. Uh, so, what guarantee that we finish at order g squared and we want to have higher terms? Uh, maybe you said it, but that would be Yeah, no, I mean, uh, these uh, mid nurture procedure, they, they typically stop at some stage, so they converge. Uh, direct construction, you, you prove it. By direct. So there's, but there's no philosophical argument. No. It just comes to the computation. Not that, not that I want to do the computation and you verify that uh, things cancel out. Yeah. Uh, but that is enough to, for things to work. So it's like sure. in other procedures, they, they stop at some stage. But it could have been two orders higher in principle. Uh, in principle, yes. But, yes. Principle, yes. but, but the structure of superiority is such that yeah. that's the, uh, the second law. Yeah. I don't know of a, a philosophical reason. Are there any further questions? Okay, well, let's thank Mario for the presentation. Thank you.